dependable nature is. We can cut down a whole forest and eventually the plants and the trees grow back and the animals, they move back in. Uh, all the food waste that's littered up and down 86, ravens and crows, they take advantage of it. And we owe, owe them a favor for cleaning it up. It's sort of like um, when, when you hear a beautiful bird song and you want to match a species to the, to the song. So you walk up on the bird and what's it do when you, when you get close? It stops singing, flies to a higher branch. But if you sit there long enough and blend in to the landscape, the bird's going to accept you as that and it's going to just move on. Because that's what you got to do, you got to just move on. But what, what happens if he, if he doesn't move on? What if nature doesn't move on? Um, I'm going to start off with a poem. This is called Do Me Harmony. This story started when we all moved to the middle of nowhere, because that made it somewhere where some took all that was there and left it worse, as nothing. Now a few fight as resiliently against her attackers as does nature herself. What happens when they stop, or when she stops? Drill into me, she says. I won't even flinch. Let the birds starve, I don't care. Here are the last of my fresh drops. Use them in your machine if you'd like. It's your world after all. If you build another road, I'll bound myself to the side of it I'm on and I'll never cross it. Damn another river of mine. I'll stop feeding it water till all your reservoirs dry up and all you're left with are walls of stone trapping your progression inside deep depressions. Hunt me until I'm revered, finally, as an individual, the last lonesome one of them whose rarity will help you see with clarity how precious I truly am, and I'll walk straight into that final bullet. Even if there is still a place for me to hide, what would be the use? You use me up. You're cutting down the rainforest to make tissues to dry the tears that are shed from the fact that you're cutting down the rainforest. You, you travel your roads, raptors hunt from your black wires, life inflates in your lakes and the stretch of the weed never tires. Let me put it like this. You hike a mountain in the northeast in the winter eating a peach. You're a king. You're wealthy's great, great grandson. You design all types of great things for landfills. You're a vertebrate at a standstill, a brilliant brain that can kill, a wilderness jump by a grit. A journey dream, but then raw as a skid. An ant in a cosmic colony scorched by the hands of a kid who's as fresh as the water running off melting glaciers. Now how cool are we if our drinking water slots in the ocean by 2050? Too cool. Right, Kurt? But there's nothing worse than being called too nice. That's like a sparrow that's too vocal. A sunset that's too beautiful. A moss too green. An art too unusual. Too nice is the meanest thing I've never accepted. And as I said it, as I corrupted my eyes, it felt as though I drew the sky myself and tried to turn me blue like an antelope. I walk away because that's my pace. I watch the forest through a finger-made window of limiting, flimsy frame. And in the span of an hour, a thousand things happen. Chickadees zigzag and z. A breeze bends in and branches of the beach and maple meet. A cloud passes over and moistens the hues. Leaves fall and cover up life's lucid clues. My voice is in her woods. I'm drenched in the air that spills over the now blurry frame. Me? I'd like to travel through the country and sit in the shade of trees I've never met. Sink into their ground before I learn their names. Record their loveliest parts before they start to change. Then cherish them for more once they appear strange. <laughs>